Now once we have all four bolts removed, now the clutch is basically set up as it was installed from the factory. Our tab is way over at new, our adjusting spacers are reset. At this point with our clutch brake installed, we're going to push the clutch pedal down three times, making sure each time we make contact with the clutch brake. If you keep your eye on the tab, you'll see that it will begin to move over and adjust. Now our reset is complete. To double check that everything went to plan, we're going to use our measurement tool, check the distance between the clutch brake and the release bearing, and we are now back to our half inch. The reset is complete. Next again we talked about clutch brake squeeze. Um, it is critical that the solo clutch have proper clutch brake squeeze because that is where we set up our half inch measurement. Proper clutch brake squeeze is defined as taking a 10 thousandths feeler gauge, putting it in between the release bearing and the clutch brake, pushing the clutch pedal down and we should not be able to pull that 10 thousandths feeler gauge out. It should clamp it. Okay. It is extremely important, especially with hydraulic linkages and even hard linkages, that we have that clutch brake squeeze. That will ensure that we maintain our half inch to 9 16s clearance between the release bearing and the clutch brake. As with the Easy Pedal clutch, this is a greasable style release bearing. Again, um, Eaton's recommendation is every 50,000 miles. U.S. Express's uh, preventive maintenance intervals are set at 35,000 miles. Again, we want to make sure grease is purging out of the bearing, getting onto the clutch brake, but we don't want to be too excessive so we're not filling the entire cavity with grease. We also have Zert fittings out on the cross shafts to grease the two bushings in the cross shafts. Uh, those locations may vary by OEM to OEM and may have grease tubes coming down from them. But there are definitely our two grease fittings, one for each of the cross shaft bushings. The last thing we're going to talk about are clutch brakes. There are two standard style clutch brakes in the industry, a single piece and then we have the two piece. Single piece clutch brakes are typically what comes from the factory. These clutch brakes have a slipping, limited slip mechanism built into them. Um, if the driver hits the clutch brake when he's going down the road, this internal piece will slip inside the external piece um, and allow for slippage. The two-piece has no limited slip. These are typically put into place when the single pieces have failed or have worn out. Um, if the driver hits the clutch brake too hard with a two-piece clutch brake, um, the, that can either break the clutch brake completely or break the screw heads off um, that are retaining it to the input shaft. If you do have a single-piece clutch brake that does fail and needs to be replaced, um, we highly recommend you do not use a torch to cut this clutch brake out. Um, excessive heat can cause the input shaft to become weak and break over time. There are also a plastic retainer inside the release bearing for grease uh, to disperse around and you can melt that. We recommend using an air chisel on either side of the single piece to get it out of the way. At this point that concludes their training with the solo clutch. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them now.